everybody. Welcome to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. Woohoo! We're back with Zoom. I'm so excited. I feel like Dorothy. I'm back. I'm back home. Um, it is Monday night. It is April 19th. I, I don't know where the month's going, but it's going fast. And, you know, April showers bring May flowers. And I'm not complaining about the rain because I'd rather take rain than snow. I'm going to talk about my weekend really, really quick and then get to my guests. Um, didn't do too much this weekend. Um, just pretty much, uh, you know, did, did some running around and, um, Saturday, my girl, Kristen Tinsley came over and we were working on, working on magic on something that we're working on. And, uh, yesterday I have to say Netflix's show, Netflix Virgin river with Tim Matheson. Amazing. Amazing. There's only two seasons. I'm hoping and praying that season three comes back. Great, great show. Watch Virgin River on Netflix. I highly recommend it. All right, listen, we're getting to my guest. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's a producer. He's a comedian. And he's an amazing improv teacher. Welcome, Al Isaacs. How are you, honey? Hey, what's going on? I'm so excited to be here. So this excited. is awesome. I'm so excited, too. I'm so happy you're here. I want to say oh. Hello to Bruno. Hello to Joanna. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Please like and share the show because um, I'm in I'm in a band, a band. I'm banned from sharing right now, so I don't know what I did. I got in trouble. Anyway, Al, 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 I'm so excited you're here. Um, I want everyone to get to know you. Okay. Um, uh, so let's start about you growing up in Levittown. You're a Long Island boy, right? I am a Long Island boy. And you went to Island Trees. I did. Everyone out there on Long Island, we were the folks that you came and beat up when the carnival came to town. It, we were it, it, you beat our football team. Boy, we it was not good. It was it, I, I. I'm so fortunate to have grown up here, but but man, just it is what it is. A little rough, right? Just a little it rough. It was. All right. So after high school, you go to Hofstra. I go to Hofstra. And you uh, studied broadcast journalism. Broadcast. Well, you know, I I grew up with this intention of becoming a corporate lawyer. Look how that turned out. Um, and um, I, I went to Hofstra and I met some amazing people and I, I got my feet wet uh, going uh, on WRHU, the, ra the radio uh, station, and, and doing their morning show with some amazing people. And uh, I kind of fell in love with doing that. And um, for anyone who knows me, uh, they, they probably won't believe that I was a really, really shy kid. I was, That's exactly what I was going to ask you next. How were you growing up? Were you funny? Were you goofy? No, class class? No, no, no. I was really, I was a really quiet kid. I, uh, in fact, uh, to get into comedy, which was right around the same time as Hofstra, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Paul Schiff, um, asked me to go take uh, the improv class at Eastside Comedy uh, back in the day. And he was the one who was going to drag me kicking and screaming. And I showed up and he didn't. And I, I ended up taking this class all by myself and really just falling in love with all of it. And I was, I was a really quiet, really shy kid. So um, high school people over the years who have come and seen my shows can't believe um, that it's me up there doing what I'm doing. I'm so sure. I'm so sure. Figure. Yeah, I mean, because you have you have to have a, a set, a pad. Yes, yes, yeah, especially with with what we do. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, with, with um, the improv of you know flying by the seat of your pants and having nothing prepared, and then going go fill an hour, and we go all right, and uh, and, and we just do it. Um, but yeah, not. Basically, uh, the, the kid who was growing up at Island Trees, if you told him how things would turn out and, and what I'd be doing, um, he, he would not believe you. I'm not sure. for a second. So you really, you started stand-up back in, uh, when, 1988? 88. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, like I said, Eastside Comedy um, had the most amazing group of people um, between uh, Kevin James and uh, Joey O'Brien and, and Paul Bond and learning from the amazing uh, Joan St. Ange. Uh, I, I was the luckiest kid in the world. Um, it really is a shame. Like they say, it's like you, you don't know it's the good old days until they're done. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, there, like there, there was a quote 
from uh, George Harrison was talking to one of, one of the guys from Monty Python after Python had broken up and after the Beatles had broken up. And George Harrison said, you know, boy, it, had I known that we were the Beatles, I probably would have tried harder. And it's, it's kind of the same thing. It's like you, you look back and, and at the amazing people that you're working with. You know, not that I didn't work with amazing people beyond that, but it's like, boy, I, I really wish right. I could have yeah. soaked up a little bit more had yeah. I known. Yeah, you don't, you, know? realize, you don't realize that you're in that moment. Um, I, I was very blessed to work with Joan as well. Oh, she's amazing. Early the best. Yeah, it was it was it was an amazing time back then. It really, mm -hmm. really was. So your first show was officially at East Side. East Side, got, yeah. My my first show, you know, and <laughs> I ended up sticking around and taking the improv class because it was on Wednesday nights um, before their open mic. And the idea was that, well, you know, let's take the improv class because you know you'll get a lot of face time. And Richie Minervini will see you and, and you know, you know, maybe give you more stage time or whatnot. And like I said, I, I ended up falling in love with the improv part of it. Not that the stand up part wasn't great too. And, and, and with, especially with that group of people, you know, Rock Rubin, I know I'm, I'm leaving people out and I don't mean to, um, but, but working with them and going and doing um, some really crazy open mic nights that were, cause, cause back then before cable, you know, comedy was really a thing. Everyone had a comedy night, yes. right? I mean, it, it was a little bit like that just before COVID, kind of the same thing. If yes. you had a microphone and a brick wall, you had a comedy night. Um, so there were, if you, have, you can I tell you a real quick story? You can tell me whatever you want, Alex. It's your, your I will. There was, there was we, we used to uh, go from uh, the improv class all the way out off of uh, the LIE. It was on a service road. There was a club called Vincenzo's. Okay. And, and it was owned by Vinny Vincenzo, uh, the man with the most redundant name, as far as I know, ever. And and um, uh, Fred Travelina. Do you remember Fred Travelina? Yes. His dad yes. used to write. So, so it was the craziest mishmash of a building where if you walked in, if you went downstairs, there was a, a gym and a racquetball court. If you made a right, um, there was a seafood restaurant. And if you made a left, there was just this catering room. It was just like, you know, what can we put here? Um, so, but they would they would just take this room and, and open it up on Wednesday nights and go, just, you know, have a show, go ahead. And so it wasn't even like, um, you know, the, the three or five minutes that you would get on a, a typical open mic night. It was just like, you guys figure out what you're gonna do and, and go do it. And um, to have that kind of freedom and to, to just work on stuff, you know, with, with these guys who, you know, were a really amazing talents even back then, but, but so giving and, 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 and creative, um, it, was, it was a huge, huge blessing. Um, to have that kind of, uh, of talent surrounding you at the very beginning, that supportive. So it was it was very, very cool. It was a very cool time to have gotten started in all this. Yeah. Did you spend um, a lot of time on the island? Did you ever go into the city? Did you expand when you were doing comedy? I didn't do I didn't do a lot in the city. Um, what ended up happening um, when I was turning 19, um, Rick Morgan found me. OK. And Rick Morgan booked me a lot. Wow. Um, and I'll never forget, like, the first time he called me to start booking me was at the beginning of December. Um, when I, My birthday is on the 20th. So he, he called me at the beginning of December. And he said, okay, uh, let's look over some dates here. And, and, he, and he just started rattling off. He said, okay, December 20th, you're going to be in Smithtown. I'm like, oh, Rick, the 20th is my birthday. Okay, so on your birthday, you're going to be in Smithtown. And, and we're just going. And he had me working a, a, a lot. And, um, you know, good, bad or indifferent. I, I wasn't one of the, um, I wasn't one of the city guys. Yeah. Um, I was, I was, I was the firehouse um, all over, you know, and then, uh, you know, he had some rooms in Connecticut and yeah. um, that's, that was kind of my start with, with stand up right. was, was doing that. 
I mean, there's still so many clubs. There's so many clubs on Long Island back then. I mean, even even in, I grew up in Queens. Queens Comedy Alley was like my hub. But yes. I, I did Konkama. Remember Konkama? Yes. Mm-hmm. Konkama. Yeah. yeah. There was so many places. Chuckles. There, there were like five, you know, you know, Richard M. Dixon's White House in, you had governors, you had, you know, uh, East Side, you had the brokerage, you had McGuire's. So, I mean, there was always yeah. somewhere to work yeah. in addition to firehouses and restaurants and you yeah. could work. You yeah. you could, you know, whether it's getting paid or what, you know. I saw this place back in the early 90s too, you know. Right. I mean, they're just, they're just so many places and it's it's you know it's uh you know now like i said it, it just you know ha- i i wish it was the kind of thing where you just go well this is this is going to last forever and yeah. this is never yeah. going to change so yeah. you know i'll just keep doing what i'm doing yeah i mean every every everything changes unfortunately you know now i know comedy opens up i think as of april 2nd or 4th if yeah. I'm- I'm not mistaken. And I know that everyone's slowly, slowly, you know, returning to comedy, um, you know, protocols are in place. Um, I, I know that um, we met through your improv class. Um, yes. I was very excited to take and it was amazing. What's and then, having you? Yeah. And then COVID hit and, um, you know, I want to, I want to take our first commercial break, but when we come sure. back, about what you've been doing during COVID because I know a lot of people were trying to stay relevant within that time and then I want to talk about how you met my friend Scott Baker and how that all came together okay so we're going to take a quick commercial break everybody please don't go away more with Al Isaacs when we come back so where do you want to go tonight are you bored Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on tight. We're going to Coasters. Coasters Tavern is located at 487 New Bridge Road in East Meadow. Their number is 516-557-2222. Kristen Tinsley is the Divine Femedian. Tarot reads and spiritual medium. Please subscribe to her YouTube channel, The Divine Femedian. That's D I V I N E, Femedian, F E M E D I A N. Check it out and let her tell you what your future holds. Val's Crafty Creations. Are you looking for something personalized? She's the one to do it. She's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. Check it out. Val's Crafty Creations from t-shirts, stemware, houseware. She does it all for any occasion. Val's Crafty Creations. Well, hi there, Teresa. It's John York from General Hospital. I am just checking in because apparently you have a great talk show called Tea Time on Strong Island TV. I want you to have continued great success and have a lot of fun. It sounds like you're having a lot of fun and that's pretty much the key to everything, isn't it? So continued success. I'm proud of you. Have a great day, Teresa. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. I want to thank um, Kristen Tinsley, my girl. Look her up. Check her out. Get a reading with her. Um, Val Manzo, go to Etsy. Check out her creations. Uh, Val's Crafty Creations on Etsy. And she can make anything you want. And I want to thank John York from General Hospital for those beautiful, kind words. I'm hoping to get him on my show since I had Carolyn Hennessy, um, who's on GH also. I'm hoping to get John on my show. I'll give some shout outs to Mo and Michael and, and, and my friends uh, who were in the improv class with me. Um, uh, taking it with Al. Um, welcome back, to everybody, including Al, to the show. So, Al, before the break, we were talking about, um, you know, how you were teaching improv and then COVID yeah. kind of came to a stop. And I just wanted to know what you've been doing during COVID, because I know a lot of people were trying to stay relevant 
Yeah, it, it, it's funny. Um, what's old is new again um, in a lot of cases. Um, so while, while I was doing comedy back in, in the 90s, my other passion in life was uh, professional wrestling. And, and it's, it's a whole thing. Um, so I, 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 at the late nineties, I ran uh, scoopswrestling.com and I used to, you know, I was a pro wrestling journalist. So that's where that degree from Hofstra went. Well, I was a, a pro wrestling journalist from. There's three words that don't go together. Well, June, 1995 to March, 2001, you were doing the scoops wrestling.com. Yes. yes. Have you always been a wrestling fan? Since I was 12. My first match, Nassau Coliseum, Tony Atlas versus Don Morocco in a steel cage. I remember it. Yes. I, I have been a, a crazy, crazy fan. And, and I, I love the business. I love the people in the business. They are amazing. And if, if I had four hours, I would discuss the parallels between pro wrestling and comedy because it's crazy how close the businesses actually are. Um, so to... Wrestling kind of came back into my life. I, it, it left for a while. And my son, about three years ago, caught the bug. And he dragged oh, me. Why? <laughs> dragged me back in. Uh, and actually, so during COVID, um, it, it, with Scoops, we, we were actually doing podcasts before it, was such a, before it was a thing. We didn't know what we were doing. We, we were inventing the internet as it went along. So we had a show called Scoops Out Loud. It was myself and Paul Bond back in the day, another comedian. And, um, you know, I did it back then. And, and my son, you know, always loved listening to the old episodes. And I said, you know, while we're stuck here in the house, what if we brought the show back and just kind of did it? And we, we just did five episodes with a bunch of old friends. And it was awesome. Just getting to do that with my son was awesome. Yeah. It was amazing. For him to share the same passion as you. Yeah. It, it is nothing yeah. better than that. No, no, no. So, um, so that kind of came back and, um, I, I can't talk about it too much. Um, but, uh, these folks came back into my life. Yes. I know um, you talk about it too much. You're such a tease. Oh. Yeah. I, I'll just, I'll just say that as, as when I was a wrestling journalist, the, just like comedy, the, the, the psychology of stuff is what attracts me, what, what pulls me in. And with pro wrestling, it's amazing to me when I, when I was behind the scenes watching a guy who can walk out to an arena, a guy like The Rock, for instance, who can have 40,000 people chanting his name and holding up signs and wearing his T-shirt and they got his action figure and he can have a crazy match in a place, blow the roof off, and then he can walk backstage, take off his boots and go pick his kid up from soccer. Right, right. And then you had others who were so good at being Superman but couldn't go back to being Clark Kent. Mm. And we're that for 24 seven. I, so I, I have to tell you though, that, that picture that you held up, it kind of looks like you. This is the amazing thing. It kind of looks like me. And that definitely kind of looks like my wife and, mm -hmm. you know, Dewey well, there. The, but I, these were, these were created before. That's the funny thing. I grew it. We, my family grew into them. Um, <laughs> but I created them back in 2000. And we, we actually had it um, sold internationally. And then 9-11 happened and everyone got out of the pool. And it seems like every two or three years, my lawyer calls me up and goes, hey, someone's interested. And I dust everything off and I bring it back out again. And here we go again. But it just so happens that with COVID, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll get off of wrestling after this, but with, with COVID, it actually was very fortuitous for me because in the past years, with this cartoon, um, they had all these different um, uh, animation festivals and Nappy and whatnot in Europe that I could never afford to go to. I could never take the time off from work. I could never get away for two weeks. Right. Everything's virtual. Right. So I've been able to do all these different um, you know, festivals. So it's been very, very cool. And um, you know, fingers crossed that, that we actually make this something now. There were some pros to COVID, I mean, they're, you know, and, and that's one of them being, being available, I mean, being yeah. available and timing, cause you know, life's all about timing. It certainly um, is. It's, it's huge, it's huge. Um, so again- I almost feel guilty. I know. I, if, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm being perfectly honest, this is the weirdest thing. 
there have been times when uh, of suffering in general. Uh, Superstorm Sandy, for instance. I have the best memories of Superstorm Sandy because my son, by candlelight or with a flashlight, would sit there and read joke books to me. And he, but he would do it like a game show right. where it's like, I'll give you the setup. You tell me what the punchline is for these like really terrible grade school knock knock. Nice. And then but the same thing happened during this. You know, it, people, it's, it's been a horrible time for so many people. But I have connected on such a deep level with my family, and we've had such um, amazing, you know, getting to do scoops again with my son, and and you know, I I'm blessed. That's you know, I, I don't know how else to put it, I, and I, I feel kind of guilty. You have the most beautiful wife on the planet. Thank you. He happens to have the most beautiful name on the planet. Look at that! Look at Look that, at that Teresa. Go figure. It's the best. I, I have an, I have an amazing, I, yeah, my, my whole family's, you, and you know my niece, my niece, Caitlin Harrell. Yes, I, I took acting classes with her. It's she's, such a cool world. She's crazy, her and her sister, Samantha, crazy, crazy, crazy talented to the point that during the, the pandemic, I've been teaching Sam and she's been, uh, drums, and I've been teaching and she's been getting so good so fast that I think I'm going to have to start teaching her wrong. So that she doesn't surpass me by the time she's 16. Oh my God, that's funny. Very jealous. That jealous, so, I tell you. That is so funny. Okay, so let's talk about um, Scott. How did you let's. meet? How, how did you meet Scott Baker? I love Scott Baker. Um, we met uh, at, so uh, after taking improv for for so many years. Um, I met Gary Smith at the brokerage. And Gary offered me the opportunity to come teach improv for him at the brokerage. And I did. And uh, one week, uh, Scott showed up and um, he became kind of a, 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 an assistant where it was like, OK, you know, let's show examples of how stuff is done. And what ended up happening was I was still doing straight stand up at the time. Okay. And I would ask Rick Morgan, I'd say, hey, Rick, you know, I'm doing this show out east uh, this weekend. Do you think I could have... 10 minutes to bring my some members of my class so that they could see what doing improv is like in front of a live audience. Right. And I'd say, sure. And I would take like five people and we'd go and do it. And what would end up happening is if I, if I was alone with Scott on stage, it was just this crazy magic. It was like, Ooh, something, this is weird. Yeah. So then the next time, instead of bringing five people, I'd bring three other people. And again, I'd be alone with Scott. And it's like, Oh, okay. And then what I would start doing was I'd be doing stand up. I'd say, Hey, Scott, if you're not doing it on Saturday night, come on down. And instead of doing a, a closing bit, I'll bring you up and we'll do something. Okay. And it went from being like the closing bit to like the audience would be going to Rick and going, Can we, can we have more of that? And, and Scott, and I said, I, I think we have to because no one else is doing two man improv. Right. And, you know, and, and at the time, you know, whose line started getting hot? So we just kind of took stuff and, and made it our own um, where the idea of playing games where you usually have other members of an improv group were like, how can we do this that we're bringing someone from the audience up every time? Right. And so it was, it was amazing. It was, it was the, just the coolest thing ever. It was, it was magic. You know, what we talked about before, though, like going into the city and working, we couldn't do that. You know, we had head mics and we, you know, it would take time to set stuff up and and take time to, you know, explain and bring people out of the audience. I mean, we basically created a, a two man show a lot of times yeah. um, and we ended up doing a lot of theaters and resorts and casinos, um, you know, Woodlock and, and Rock. This was the cool thing about it, that we could do an adult show at like Mohegan Sun once a month. And then go to Woodlock, which is like age eight to age yeah. 80. Yeah. And then do like Rocking Horse Ranch, where 90% of the people were under 10. Right. And have a blast at every one of them. It was just the, the coolest, coolest thing. And and, and, and it's like I, when I teach classes, I, I teach adults, but I also teach kids. And I get a kick out of both. It's, it's two completely different experiences yeah. because for the... For me, improv is, it's playing like you did when you were a little kid, but having all the experience of being an adult. 
all the people you've ever met, all the books you've read, all the TV shows you've watched, all the movies you've seen, you know, so you have all that experience. So with the grownups, the challenge is getting them plugged back into playing again and remind, remembering what that was like. Right. Um, and with the kids, it's giving them the confidence to go, okay, even though you don't have all this life experience, you can do this. You have, you know, and giving them that self-esteem and that confidence. And with the kids, it's convincing them that they're funnier than they are. And with the grownups, usually it's convincing them they're not quite as funny as they think they are. But, <laughs> but, but some are meeting in the middle. You know what I mean? And, and, and the, the big challenge, too, is when, when I'm teaching people who do stand-up, just because you're good at improv doesn't mean you're, you're good at stand-up. I'm a real good example of that. And just because you're good at stand-up doesn't mean you're going to be good at improv. It's two different muscle sets. Totally two different animals. Yeah. Yeah, because when I'm teaching people in the very beginning of you know, guys who are, or, or girls who are uh, experienced in stand-up, you could see them in their mind looking for a punchline. You know, if you're doing a, a, a improv bit that you're in a hospital, you could see them going, wait, I have a thing about being a doctor. And, and you know, they're not in the moment. They're not listening to the partner. They're looking for material. And it's, you, you, you can't do that. You got to, you know, separate. As organic as you can possibly get. Yes. Yes. It's, you're, you're, you're jumping out of a plane and putting the parachute together on the way down. <laughs> it, it's, it's awesome. It's, so it, what, when it's working... There is no better feeling in the world. It's so true. Listen, I just want to give a shout out to Ellen Temple. Fagan, thank you for tuning in, my friend. We went to school together. And um, thank you um, to everyone watching. Uh, please like the show. Please share it. I appreciate everyone tuning in. And I appreciate everyone supporting me and Tea Time. And I keep, I keep doing this because of them. I don't make any money. I don't have any sponsors. I'm really doing it. But look, you, I'm an entertainer. I love being in front of the camera, but I also love, I love people. I'm a people person and I love, yes, I know Al and I took his class, but you know, I don't, you know, I only know the surface and I want to, I love to get to know people underneath that surface. So um, I appreciate you being here as my guest, Al. It means Please, it means love it. It really does. Listen, um, everyone stay where you are. Don't go away. We're going to take another commercial break. We'll be right back with Al Isaacs and more fun stories. <laughs> So where do you want to go tonight? Why don't we go to Coasters? Oh, cool. I heard it's a great place. Let's check it out. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> located at 487 New Bridge Road in East Meadow. Their number is 516-557-2222. Kristen Tinsley is the divine comedian, tarot reads, and spiritual medium. Please subscribe to her YouTube channel, The Divine Comedian. That's D-I-V-I-N-E, comedian, F. E-M-E-D-I-A-N. Check it out and let her tell you what your future holds. Val's Crafty Creations. Are you looking for something personalized? She's the one to do it. She's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. Check it out. Val's Crafty Creations. From t-shirts, stemware, houseware. She does it all for any occasion. Val's Crafty Creations. No, How you doing? It's Sal, the voice of Valentinetti. Why are you watching me? You should be watching Teresa Canastracy Tea Time with Teresa Canastracy Farrell. And make sure you, you, you follow Teresa on Facebook, Tea Time with Teresa Canastracy Farrell. We'll see you there. I love the way you say my name. I love it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight because I have my friend and fantastic, amazing master improv teacher, Al Isaacs is here. He's also an actor, he's a writer, he's a producer. The man does it all. He's just amazing and he's been doing it for a very long time. So he knows what the hell he's doing, okay? Um, Al, uh, Michael Schiff is, is watching. He says, hello, Mr. Al. Hello, Michael. Michael Schiff is the son 
of the guy who got the, the, the friend who told me to go to East Side Comedy and take a class with him and never showed up. That's his kid. Hey, That's Michael. Amazing. Good to see you, man. Kind of. But listen, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. What's the biggest mistake yes. that people make doing improv? And what's the one thing you should never do? Oh, man. You know, I, I've been... Uh, that's tough. That really is tough. Um, it, it's to be a team player. You, you got to be a team player. Um, I, I don't, you know, I, I love working with all different people doing improv. But I'll, I'll give you a, an example of, of one of the nights I've hated. Um, Scott and I were doing a show at uh, Mohegan Sun. And the night before, um, the bookers had us do a, a local restaurant beforehand. And the guy that was going to be opening for us at Mohegan Sun opened for us at the restaurant. And I'm glad he did um, because um, and I'm not going to give names. Scott, if you're watching, you know who I'm talking about. Um, this guy was horrible in that he was so mean to the audience. He was cruel oh. and like made a woman cry kind of cruel. And here we are as improvisers. I'm bringing you up on stage. You have to trust me. You don't know who I am. I'm not famous. You have to trust you know, at least in the beginning of the show, before you really understand what we do. Right. And when we have someone going up and, and just tearing apart the audience. He set the tone. He said, yeah, the he poisoned the well. And it was, and I'll never forget because we, we ended up having to call the booker and go, we, we can't have this guy open for us at Mohegan Sun. It, we, just, we just can't. Um, but, he, you know, he tried to explain himself afterwards. And he said, well, you know, there, there's always there's. You, you, you always got to have a bad guy. I'm going, no, you're thinking of Westerns, not comedy shows. We don't have to have a bad guy at a comedy show. So I, I, I think when, when it comes to improv, setting the table is important. Um, whether it's knowing the room that you're in, um, you know, the age of the people, um, not going too blue too fast, because once you open that box, that's kind of it, you know, that they're expecting that for yeah. the show. So play to, you know, the, the higher end of, of the spectrum, um, you know, and, 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 I, and I say this for comedy and, and for improv, um, just cause you can doesn't mean you should. Amen. Um, what's that? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just because you, you, you uh, I'll give you another really good story with that too. Um, one of the nights that I, I brought my class with me out East, um, one of the guys in, in addition to wanting to do some improv asked if he can have a five minute set. Okay. And uh, it was going to be his first time on stage and pumped, excited, let's go. And the guy had, in, in all fairness, the guy ended up being a really good comedian, very good entertainer these days. Okay. But, but that night I sat down with him. I was like, you want to talk about your set? And he says, sure, sure, sure. I thought I would open uh, with this thing about being on Long Island. Said, oh, great. And, uh, you know, the New York Jets, New York Jets stuff. I'm like, okay, we're talking about New York Jets. And then this and this. And then uh, I have this thing about breast cancer. And then this. And I went, whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind. You got what? And he's like, yeah, I have this bit about breast cancer. And I said, man, I was like, I am, I am not going to tell anyone what to do or what not to do because you may have a really good reason. You, there, there may be a story in you passionate that's very personal to you and you have a message to, to use through humor to right. bring to the audience right that being said you have five minutes and you are on long island which means in that room right now of the 80 some odd people there is someone who has it someone who is married to someone who has it someone who has a sister who has it someone who has a mother that room is filled so if you're gonna do this just understand what you're doing before and um, it ended in tears, but um, it was a, it was a very good lesson um, because you know honestly I'll, I'll never tell someone not to do something unless uh, you know a club owner. I've seen that so many times where a club owner says, "Hey, don't religion, politics, whatever." So you can't tell me what to do, and I'm going, "Well, yeah, he can. It's his room, you know. If 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 you want to do that stuff, don't do this room. Yeah, you know." Yeah. Yeah. That's the best. Oh, and, and, and one other uh, piece of advice too that I always give: be nice to everybody. Be nice to the waitresses, the 
bartender, you don't know who knows who or who is going to be somebody tomorrow. You just don't. Right. Not to mention that you just should be a nice person. <laughs> you should be, naturally. Absolutely. You should. But, you know, Hello. just have it in the back of your head that, you know, the person that you feel is lower than you because they're doing, yep, yeah, no, no, they're not. And you're only going to hurt yourself if you take that attitude. Yeah. So that's, that's my advice. And, and there's um, a couple of rules in improv, right? Like there's the yes, yes. and. Yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and. I have to, I, well, I have to trust you. It's try not to go into the negative because once you say no, where do you go from there, right? No, it's, you, you, it's shut, you shut everything down. So it, it's yes, and, and, and again, if you got four hours, I'll go into this. Uh, yes, and it's, it's the absolute basic and it's not always yes. I'm, I'm not just agreeing to the words you're saying. Okay. I'm agreeing to your premise. Right, right. Yeah, because exactly. yeah. I, I could have in the back of my head, you know, going into you and I are going to do a scene. Oh, this is great. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a doctor. And you go, officer, there's been a crime. <laughs> and it's like, uh, but I'm a doctor. You know, it, no, it's like, just save that for another time. Teresa has given you a premise. We're going with what Teresa just said. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> great. Yeah, you 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 can't you, you cannot be a control freak and do improv. No, you can't. You, you can't. No, you have to just let it go. Let it go. You know, stand up comedy, you're in control. It's you and a microphone against the world. But improv, this is volleyball. I'm setting you up, you're setting me up. My job is to make you look like a genius. So right. exactly. that's it. Exactly. That's that's the goal. Well, listen, I have to tell you, I'm, I, I was impressed to find out that you were, um, first of all, you were, um, where is it? Hello. Uh, I was. Where was I? Where were you? Hello. Where were you? Um, I can't, I can't, I can't find it right now that I'm looking for it. All right. So tell me about. Improvise. Go. You were featured, you were featured on ABC. You were featured on VH1. You were yeah. featured. MTV, tell me about all that. It sounds yeah. so funny. I've, I've done some cool stuff over the years, yeah. haven't I? Good. <laughs> well, what am I doing here? I am going. No, I, I, yeah, I, I've had, I've had the coolest life. I have, had, I have done some, so much cool. Stuff. I was on America's Funniest People um, with my, my good friend Steve Strangio. Um, I, I, I did uh, VH1 uh, Celebrity Show uh, SmackDown. Um, Bye. I, I produced my own wrestling show in Philadelphia called Break the Barrier, and I got powerbombed through a table. Man, I've done some cool stuff. Wow. I, 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 and, and this is this is where improv comes in. Yes, and when you are given an opportunity, say yes. Oh, absolutely. Because no great story starts with, you know, this one time I almost. No. Yes, and. I mean, there's, I, I would, I would rather look back and, and, and feel some regret that stuff didn't work out rather than look back and regret not trying. Ex Amen. I swear to God, I, I say the same thing because you, you don't want to have any regrets. Life's so short. I know I say yes to a lot of things. I say yes. And then I, and then I'm like, oh, what did I just say yes to? And I, and yes. I like, but you know what I say? I say yes. I'm a yes girl. You know, they say yes. Yes, men, I'm a yes girl. And also, hello, two, 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 my friend. You were named Long Island's best comedian by the Long Island Press. Hello. Thank you, Long Island Press. That was that was the and 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 and, and to show how much I appreciated it, I quit the business. Like, oh yeah, I'm the best, then I'm not doing this no more. I'll show you. Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? Life's taking you, my friend, in many directions. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And you have to, you know, you're saying yes and yes and yes and yes and just yes because all those yeses open all these doors yes. and you, and you meet people that you probably yes. wouldn't have met and it just no. it, it's 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 all there it's in the universe it's all paved for us it's just a matter positive of waiting till it happens be positive yeah. you know, em positive. embrace opportunities positive vibrations. I wouldn't have met you. Come on. I didn't say yes to your class. <laughs> See? Right. For example. Right. And you know, most of the time when I do something, I drag people with me. Right. And either they 
stick along for the ride or they don't. Like you said, you had your friend. You were both supposed to go. And they mm-hmm. didn't go up. Think about if you didn't show up. And he well, that, I, I, I said it to you off camera and I absolutely mean it. That as, as you're living your life, stuff happens. You get to these crossroads and it doesn't quite make sense. And then you turn 51 like I did and you look back and you go, oh, that led to that. I mean, I remember speaking of Michael Schiff. So his dad, Paul, the reason that he, uh, that I knew him to want to go and, and, and go to East Icon, we were in a band together. I was a drummer in a band with Paul. Hey, you play drums. And, yes. I, I, and, and there's another cool, I, I got to study with Liberty DeVito from Billy Joel's band. What? The best ever. So come on. So we're in this band together and, and, and the comedy stuff started taking up a lot of my time. And they went, all right, you got to make a decision. You're either a drummer or you're a comic. And... I, I love those guys, but I sat down and I'm like, let's see, dragging drums all over the place, unpacking, packing them up and splitting a check five ways or show up. The microphone is there. I keep all of the money and then I go home and play the drums in my basement. Win, win. <laughs> Cause if I went home and if I became a drummer and just did jokes in my basement, that would just be sad. Right. So it all works out for a reason. It all works out for a reason. It's amazing. It's just, it's just amazing how really things happen for a reason. And they, it may not be explainable at the moment, but like right. you said, actually it all makes sense. Right, right. You, you, you do stuff and sometimes you do it because of something or you do it in spite of something. And, you know, stuff that's supposed to work out is going to work out. And I, and I look at even the, even the COVID thing, which, man, again... But it's 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 created all these amazing creations that people would not have done had this not happened. And in a lot of ways, I look at it the way I look at uh, how comedy was like in the late '80s into the '90s when cable TV took off. Right. So you had all these clubs. You had everyone doing a comedy night everywhere, oh, yeah. and and they would have twelve comics on, out of which maybe two should have been there, right? No disrespect to anyone trying it because God bless you, it takes a lot to do. You know, I always start, you know, I start my class by saying, um, when they talk to people about their greatest fears, death is number two. Doing this is number one. So so for you to stand up there and bury your soul and do comedy, awesome. But that being said, when cable comedy came along, you had audience members going, why am I paying a cover charge and a two drink minimum to get a two hour show out of which I'm enjoying 10 minutes when I could just sit on the couch and see comic strip live or whatever, you know, and enjoy the whole thing for, you know, my cable bill. Right. So it caused, uh, you know, it caused the comedy business, the people who needed to be comedians stuck around and the people who maybe just were trying it as a lock or whatever, had a great experience, got a good story to tell folks and, and walked away. And I think that, you know, now that we're coming out of COVID, it may be the same thing that the, the people who are just like itching to get out there. It's true. You're going to see who returns yeah. to comedy and who, and who's not. And I have to tell you the truth. I know I've had um, some friends um, in the comedy business, um, uh, leave Dodge. They just left yeah. New York. You know, they just couldn't stay and they left. And it's tough. It's it, you know, yeah. because even when you're thinking the, the mathematics of, of, of going back to do, you know, to work in a club, um, you know, how much money does a club need to make to open the doors for 20% of the room to pay for the lights and the comics and the waitress and the bar, you know, trying to the, the finances of it. It's, it's nuts. And unfortunately for Scott and me, you know, that's two guys you got to pay. And our act was bringing people out of the audience up on stage with us. So now there's a whole different element of for a resort to go, am I opening myself up to, you know, a problem if someone gets sick and says, well, it was because of your show. Right. It's it's terrifying, you know. I mean, you saw our, our show is very physical. You know, we'll do the no arms thing. We're we're kind of right on top of the audience. Yeah. Woodlock will bring twenty kids up on stage with us to do the Mad Libs game, right. and so you you can't socially distance that, you know. Unfortunately, yeah. so 
you know, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. Rough. All right. So listen, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with my friend, Al Isaacs, and he's an actor. He's a writer, producer, and he's a comedian, an amazing improv teacher. Um, I, I want to thank, hello, Victoria. Thank you for watching. Everyone, thank you for watching. Please like and share the show because I can't share it. I'm banned right now. So share it, like it, love it. Tell your friends. I'm here every Monday night at eight o'clock. Okay. And if you want to advertise on my show, contact me. It is so inexpensive. And um, um, Do it. It'll bring you business to your to whatever you sell, buy, or want want to do. Um, listen, we're gonna take our last commercial break, and then when we come back, more with Al. Stay right there. Don't go away. So where do you want to go tonight? Are you bored? Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Hold on tight, we're going to Coasters. Coasters Tavern is located at 487 Newbridge Road in East Meadow. Their number is 516-557-2222. Kristen Tinsley is the Divine Femedian. Tarot reads and spiritual medium. Please subscribe to her YouTube channel, The Divine Femedian. That's D I V I N E, Femedian, F E M E D I A N. Check it out and let her tell you what your future holds. Val's Crafty Creations. Are you looking for something personalized? She's the one to do it. She's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. Check it out. Val's Crafty Creations from t-shirts, stemware, houseware. She does it all for any occasion. Val's Crafty Creations. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight because my friend and wonderful improv teacher, Al Isaacs, is with me. And I'm so glad God put you in my path because oh. he, he puts certain people in your path for certain reasons and I'm, and I'm blessed, really, to have you in my life. Thank you so much. Uh, as a friend and as a teacher. Um, and I want to thank Sal the Voice Valentinetti. Thank you for the last um, break that we took. I forgot to mention him. I'm sorry. Sal. But and again, Kristen Tinsley, hook her, um, get in contact with her for a reading. Val, Val's Crafty Creations, go to Etsy. All right, so back to Al. So Al, yeah. Um, tell me about this movie that you're doing. Yeah, that I'm doing a movie. I'm doing a movie. Um, my very talented friend, Rob Braden, who is another guy, you talk about people from your past. Rob started with me at Eastside Comedy back in, in, in the late 80s. Um, he's turned into an amazing filmmaker. The guy has done some incredible, I mean, like across the board from Muppets to documentaries to he, he, the guy's incredible. And he approached me about this uh, movie that he was putting together called uh, Many a Poor Boy. And, it was, and, and, and he had the idea of doing it during the pandemic and each person shooting remotely and they're gonna put it all together. And it's very cool. I, I, I can't give anything away. Yeah. Um, but what I love, what I love, love, love is that it is improvised. It's, it's love it. Love it. You, are, you are given the framework. It's, you know, like, like the Christopher Guest movies. Oh. Here's what we need to accomplish in this scene from A to B, go. It's like curb your enthusiasm. Yes, exactly. I love so, that. So I'm so excited, and um, you know, I, so, because you can be so creative and think outside the box, and you know, sometimes when I when I read a script, and 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 obviously the words are there, and then that's that's what they want to hear, mm -hmm. but you know, things, and I'm sure with you too, things pop into your mind that yeah. is either funny or is going to make more sense, or right. oh, I would love to just say this instead of that, and, you know. Right. And it, it really depends on the the writer, the director. The director. How much you, you have? Usually, with it, with with a with, if you have a if you have, if you have a great crew and you have a great director and they you know, and, and you nail it, you know what's on the page. They'll go, all right, let's do one the way you want to try it. Yeah. And sometimes just magic, 
You know, I, I think every comic, every comic, every comic has that moment of walking back to their car and thinking of the line they should have said. Yes. Yes. Nothing more just frustrating. Or, or the one night that you do decide to improvise during a set and you didn't record it and you oh, don't remember no. exactly what you said in the order or the words. There's that's nothing why, worse. That's why you have, you, Jack, I had Jackie the Joke Man on uh, Martling a couple of weeks ago and he said he's recorded every set he's ever done. Everything. And you know what? smartest thing to do and I was just telling Kristen I said you know you when you record yourself it, it and it makes you listen to what works and what doesn't work it makes you weed out the weak stuff work on the strong stuff keep the strong stuff in there because you right. know you can get your laugh but right. I have to tell you I did an indie film with um Sarah Martin and okay. um uh I was a patron and again because she knows the comedy background she said to me I'm gonna give you the scenario scenario Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Um, we did three different takes. And on the third one, everyone cracked up. And we knew that was the one that we were going with. There you go. You Because, know, again, with improv, it's the same thing. When you realize that it's not about you, that it's it's about the, 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 the scene, the, the bigger picture, that's when, you know, when you're giving. And, you know, because so, like with, with Scott, some nights – he was on fire. Some nights I was on fire and you just, you, you make the other person look great and you'll always have work. Right. Right. And I think that, I think that's why it works so well with both of you because you, you, you wanted to make each other look well. And I think yeah. that's the secret. That's the secret. You know, it's gotta be give and take. It can't be one-sided, you know, right. especially when you're doing what you guys did. Um, and I, th and I also think that, um, you know, uh, again, in, improv is, you know, look, doing stand-up comedy is flying by the seat of your pants. But like you said, improv just takes it up to that whole other level. And, and the beautiful thing, improv doesn't have to be, when I teach it, I'm, I'm not teaching it that, that you have to go out there and do who's line. Because it's, a, it's another tool for your toolbox, whether you're acting, whether you're doing stand-up, to, to have that confidence that no matter what happens when I'm on that stage, I'm not afraid to... Um, you know, go with a premise to a place I've never gone before. Right. Um, or in, you know, if you're writing, if just, just, just day to day skills, improv is an amazing tool to have. Right. Right. It is. It is. And, um, you know, we only have a, we only have like a minute left. This goes okay. so fast. Doesn't this go fast? I loved having you on. You know, you're invited anytime you'd like to talk about anything. Oh, thank you. That, you know, that comes to fruition. But sure. I do want people to know how to follow you, how to get in contact with you, how to take an improv class with you. So mm -hmm. put it out there, my friend. I am hoping that by the fall, we're all got our vaccines and things are safe again to, to do this because I am itching to teach it live. Um, as I said, trying to teach improv over Zoom is like trying to teach calligraphy in the dark. You can't do it. So um, <laughs> hook up with me on Facebook. That's probably the best place to, because I, you know, I can concentrate on one platform at a time. So okay. Facebook, I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. You can follow where, where I'm going to be performing or what's going on with the movie or with these guys or uh, with my, my, my classes. Um, because we, we want to start that up again in the fall. Uh, yeah. Al Isaacs, just like it's spelled down there, you, you'll find me. I'll friend you, and you know we'll live happy ever after. We'd yeah, love. Awesome! I can't I can't wait. I'm I'm so excited, and 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 I'm and I'm really hoping that one day we get to do something together because I think it'll be a blast. Oh, yeah. oh man, blast. that'd be so much fun. I want, to, I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you so much. Hello, Gerard. Thank you. Oh, another great show. Thank you, Gerard. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Please like the show. Please share the show. Share the crap out of it. Put it all yes. over. Um, and remember, tea time is every Monday night at eight o'clock. I want to thank my friend Al Isaacs. He's a, he's an amazing person in and out. I love you. I want to thank, thank everyone. Al, you stay right there. Don't go away. Everyone else, stay safe. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Monday. Ciao, everybody. Bye.